Well, fine. Good evening, everyone. This is Patricia and I are traveling for history. I'm in Richmond, Vermont today, and this is essentially part two uh, of my visit to the Richmond Village Cemetery, also known as the Old Village Cemetery. Now, that building there that looks like a church started life as a church, built in 1879 as a universalist uh, Universalist Church, uh, I'm guessing, but do not know, that uh, that these graves here uh, were people, were parishioners of that church, but uh, I, I really have no idea. I mean, there's another church right across the street, built in 1903-04, uh, that's the Richmond Congregational Church. Uh, you can catch it on my channel, it's already up. So, um, anyway... I, th I think it's already up. I think it will be already up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, finishing my walk of the cemetery. I have lights on uh, so we can see things better. If you come here to walk, though, the ground is really terrible. It's, uh, and of course, there's snow on the ground, right? So I can't see where all the dips are. We can see this poor headstone right here. Holy cow. Another one down. It's, uh, it's, uh, last they knew it was 24 degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill, uh, that makes it, makes it feel like, uh, 17 degrees above zero. Since I'm still sporting my one glove uh, on my left hand, which holds my rig. With my right hand, I take photographs as I go along. So my right hand is certainly feeling the breeze, shall we say. A friend did suggest getting those gloves that have the uh, finger tip cutouts. And I may actually have to invest in uh, in uh, in them. Well, let's take a look around this headstone here. Samuel H. Clark, born 1837, died in 1888. Harriet T. A. Whitworth, wife uh, of Samuel Clark, uh, born May 1831 and died October 1898 um, or 96, hard to say. It's much easier to read looking through the viewfinder than it is actually looking at the headstone itself. Well, this is unusual. My best bet is, or guess is, that it was supposed to be sitting on a base and supposed to be taller. So I don't know um, what happened here. But this is the second thing, the second uh, grave marker that just seems too short. And since I have been seeing tons of broken headstones, and headstones that are down on the ground, such as uh, this one again, um, I'm inclined to believe that something happened to the base. But I may be wrong. I'm no expert. An expert in nothing, but uh, have uh, lots of interests. Well, this tree coming down does not help headstones. Now, it does look like it missed them, but uh, we can see this one has had a better day. It's just taking a bit of a rest, a breather. It is getting dark, by the way, in case you can't tell. But 
Let's take a look, see at some of these over here. Definitely a family grouping here. This is the Green family, Oliver Green, who died in 1884, aged 64 years, and his wife Susanna Thompson. If you're wondering why the last name is different, it's because it's her maiden name. And I love that. I love when they have the maiden names on the headstones. It's just so much easier for genealogical purposes or just for conducting research, uh, as I do, as, a, as so many folks do. I want to look at this one over here, too before it gets too dark to see anything. Here's another big headstone. Wow. Hmm. Can we read that? I think it's Ferguson. But I can't read any more of that. But if you figure it out, please put in the comments below. I do read them, I do respond to them. Another obelisk. That's seven official ob obelisks. If you watch, watch part one, uh, you'll, you'll see me count them. Holy cow, look at those right there. The way they're lined up, they remind me of uh, Easter Island with those um, the face headstone, uh, not headstones, the faces on Easter Island. Let's take a look at this humongous headstone here. Hilton and Stevens. I can read that from the angle. Holy cow. And now you can too. And this thing is huge. Huge. It's, uh, it's about as tall as I am. I am uh, under 5'2". Wilton Stevens, 1841-1903. Marion M. Shed, M. Shed, his wife, 1846-1918. Enos Stevens, wife of W.S. Walker, 1866-1908. And how about the back side here? Hilton and Stevens again on the back. Admittedly, I am a little leery of walking up the hill because it's quite slick. But I am a curious soul. It's a double-edged sword. Oh, because there's tons of leaves underneath. Duh. the underside of the headstone. You know I've been talking about these things for some time now. I have like a shorts video on one of them at uh, Greenmount Cemetery in uh, Burlington, Vermont. Uh, that's uh, yeah we shouldn't be able to see any of the underpinnings here. Yeah, no, we shouldn't be able to see that stuff at all. It's because of the freeze that we can see these things. So this is the Jones family, and it's R.A. Jones, 1830 to 1884. His wife, Caroline E. Flag, I think it's Flag. 1823 to 18, I don't know, 
I'm not climbing this. I think this, I don't think this is a headstone. I think that, I don't see. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to bet that it's uh, actually, I think on this side of that one, there's a, um, a connection for a chain. I think there was a chain around this for the family headstones. This family here, Goodrich it appears to be. And then, There's this one here, and this is going to be the last one I walk up to. Uh, there's really not too many up here. The sound that sounds like plastic is uh, I'm stepping on uh, tons of leaves that are under the snow. But look at that ball. Ooh, oops. Irish is the name on this one. See, there it is. Irish. Beautiful, no? I think so too. There we go. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming with me today. Uh, it's an interesting cemetery, no doubt. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. Thanks for joining me on this uh, trek of uh, the Richmond Village Cemetery, also known as the Old Village Cemetery in Richmond, Vermont. Until I see you again, you have a great evening. Bye.